I may have got the farthest away from the pad, I would think. <laughs> Maybe the booby prize, I think, here for it. Sadly, farthest doesn't win in this event. And evidently, experience doesn't get you any closer to the pin. Anne Marie was the closest, 74 foot. <laughs> You haven't seen a pink and yellow rocket. <laughs> Your first rocket. My first rocket. Everybody said pink and yellow rocket. So Nimway earns more than just style points. At 74 feet from the pad, Team Loch Ness wins the target landing competition. Anybody see a pink and yellow rocket? Rocket. The Mercury is hitting 109 in the shade here in Arconia, Kansas, but Rocket Challenge doesn't stop for searing heat. All 58 pads are loaded and ready to launch rockets. One small group of rocket men came to Kansas with their eyes on a big challenge, set a new world record for the most rockets launched simultaneously. The number to beat, 197 in 2001. We're here with George, Dave, and Warren. You guys are from Colorado Springs. I understand you guys are going to set a world record today. Yes. What are we looking at? We're looking at launching 288 rockets with a push of a single button. That's right, 288 rockets, less than a foot tall, and powered by an A motor. Every single one of these rockets is going to go off at the same time? That's right. 72 times 4 equals 288 rockets. We're talking a whole lot of black powder. I'm going to give a 10 count on this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, smoke. Fire. Is the battery connected? Are we on? Oh, wait a second. Did we turn them on? They're all wired up. What about the connectors? Are we, uh, are we hot here? Are we hot here? Yeah. <laughs> are you sure? Yep. Yep. Okay, okay time out. Let's go check. Recycling, reach Hang on, okay. hang on. That was a practice one. 288 rockets means 288 connections in one homemade launch array. The problem could be lurking in any one of them. So obviously we had some technical problems, and that's part of rocketry. You know, you get excitement, you get three, two, one, nothing. So they're going to work out the bugs, and stay tuned. 300 Rocketeers have come to Rocket Challenge with something to prove. But when it comes to power, thrust, and recovery, age just doesn't seem to matter. My name is Woody Hoberg. Woody and Jim Hoberg from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, flying the flag rocket. I'm 17 years old. I've been making uh, the large rockets probably for about three years now, and I've been making smaller rockets for at least six or seven years. The best part of rocketry is getting to take the rocket out and put it on the pad and know that you built the whole thing yourself. But when your motors are this complex, anything can happen. There's a total of seven motors that can be lit, uh, some on the ground and some in the air. As if a supersonic rocket with ground and air-launched motors isn't complicated enough, Woody wants to watch it all as it happens 4,000 feet up. We have a video camera that transmits the flight back to the ground live. So we're sitting here watching the rocket in the air, but we're also watching the video on a TV from the rocket as it's flying, which is a really cool thing to see. Everyone wants to direct. Quiet on the set. Five, four, three, two, smoke. Whoa! It hit Sonic. Oh, yeah. That hit the stage right now. That's a multiple stager. So the builder of one of the most unique and successful rockets at this year's competition can't vote, drink, and barely needs to shave. Nobody like NASA or anybody has uh, contacted me. Maybe they should. Larger rockets have big motors. So what happens when you put a big motor in a smaller rocket? You get our next event, the Supersonic Showdown. 
are trying to have the fastest rocket out here. Um, the whole point is to reach the highest speed. The rules are simple. Fly anything you want powered by a motor or cluster of motors creating up to 2,500 pounds of thrust. Clock the fastest absolute speed without breaking apart, recover safely, and you're the supersonic challenge champ. This one is strictly for thrill seekers. By its very nature, it's very extreme. It's difficult to win because everybody is pushing the stress limits of their rockets. It's pure adrenaline rush, you know? It's the wow factor. Uh, the oh yeah, oh my god, uh, wow. It's also an arena for some of the best trash talk on the range. Unbeatable. <laughs> it's gonna make some of these other guys' rockets look like big fat cows. The cheetah versus the cow. The competition does not have a rat's chance anywhere. I don't know if I'd go as far to say win it, but um, I, I uh, plan a strong finish. Okay, so not everyone can talk the talk, but when it comes to designing supersonic rockets, everyone in this field speaks the same language. Solid carbon fiber, 40 ounces, huge motor. We're just minimum diameter, a uh, fairly tall and skinny rocket with a lot of impulse in the motor. It'll be moving along really well. With so much power and such small rockets, the big question is, can they hold together or will they disintegrate hitting the sound barrier? First to test the challenge is Team Loch Ness and their entry, Hot Rockets. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I hope it works for them, but I'm a little skeptical. Come on, let's do it. Got our wrists. <laughs> The only thing that Hot Rockets does quickly is shred apart. We got folks. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. A textbook Cato. Team Loch Ness put too much pressure on their rocket and they leave the competition in pieces. Back to the dry board. We'll try it again. Hillbilly Bob Iannucci and his rocket Brainiac are ready for their chance to challenge the sound barrier. Range safety, I'm hooking up igniters. Right now, my chest feels it's like it's somewhere around my stomach, and that's the last place I need to have anything else, personally. <laughs> Very exciting moment, a lot of adrenaline. I really want this thing to go off without a hitch. Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and smoke. It's in the clouds, but man, that thing's gonna be 16,000 feet. We'll see it again in about two or three minutes if we're lucky. There's no need to wait to find out what happened. Brainiac lives up to its billing with an onboard chip called RDAS. That's short for Rocket Data Acquisition System. And what it does is radio information about the rocket's speed, altitude, and G-force back to the ground in real time. This unit is inserted into a flyer's rocket and they turn it on and the computer inside here is able to calculate the acceleration and then it sends it to this board which transmits it down to our computers and our receivers and as the rocket's going up we're able to see how fast it's going come on baby come back home before bob regains sight of his brainiac joe has a clear view 10,000 feet 12,000 we have deployment detected it's under parachute right now. There it is! There it is! It. There it is! Yeah! Yeah! Wow. That was extreme, man. That was extreme. That's my hillbilly! That's my man right there, right there. After two launches, Brainiac holds the lead with a supersonic mark of 801 miles per hour. But with most of the field still heading out to the pads, Kansas has yet to hear its last sonic boom. Rocket Challenge is brought to you in part by Top. Two weeks before this competition began, this launch range was a wheat field waiting to be harvested. Now they're loading the next contenders in the supersonic challenge onto the pads. Billy Rocketry's Bob Iannucci sits on a precarious lead. His Brainiac hit 800.